The abortion issue in the United States is definitely the most contentious and the most emotional by far. On one side, people who are pro-choice will tell you that if you do not support abortion, you hate women. And that there is no exception. You hate women unless you support abortion. And on the other hand, to be fair, on the pro-life side, you want to kill babies if you support abortion. And you are a baby killer. So there is a lot of hate and vitriol between the two sides. But as someone who is completely pro-life, I try to kind of push that aside when I talk, when, when I form personal relationships with people. Because if I feel like someone deep down is a good person, I'm not going to hold their personal, moral, and political beliefs against them if I think that they are, at the end of the day, a good person. And they don't mean any harm. In the case of pro-choice, I don't think that anybody, uh, there is nobody who is pro-choice. Maybe there is a few, but I, they're just psychotic people. But I would say no, the vast majority of pro-choice people do not even see the unborn child as either, they don't think of it as a life at all, or if they do at least acknowledge the scientific fact that life does begin at conception, you are you, you become you as soon as conception occurs. The DNA is already is there, and therefore you exist. And life is beginning to develop and grow. You are a life as soon as conception happens. But they don't believe that. So if someone is misguided, that doesn't mean that they're evil. And, you know, for someone that has the weird political beliefs that I do, if I were to only become friends with those who have every single moral value that I do, I would have no friends. Because they're, they're, the people don't, don't exist, like, <laughs> that would agree with everything that I believe. And you're going to find in life that you're going to have a lot of people that have a viewpoint that you find morally reprehensible, but it, it would be the mature thing and the responsible thing to accept those differences at the end of the day and find common ground elsewhere because I've always had a problem with that. That's kind of why I stepped away from politics for such a long time and didn't get involved in it at all because I've always found myself in a situation where I express my political views. I don't have any hatred at all. I don't feel like I have a bone of hate in my body. And everything that I say does not come from a position of vitriol, of trying to bring people down or anything like that. But there are a lot of people just hearing my viewpoint would automatically assume just because I have a different viewpoint that they do not agree with that I am problematic. I have a huge problem with that way of thinking because it assumes that you're right about everything, which, you know, you may think that you're right about everything and you may never think that you could ever be wrong at all. And my dog's walking in the room, so I'm sorry if you hear a clicking noise. But, you know, it's, it just feels so immature to build an echo chamber around yourself and not even listen to other ideas, whether you agree with them or not, whether you, there is even the possibility of you ever being persuaded or not. I can make the most compelling pro-life argument that could ever be possible, but almost everybody that is already pro-choice, they've already made up their minds and they don't care what I'm going to say, no matter what I say. Because they always just have it in their head that pro-choice is pro-women. Pro-life uh, pro or anti-abortion is anti-women. And that's it. There is no open-mindedness at all. But I think even if you reach that point where you can't agree, you'll never agree. There is so much more to life than politics. And I know... You know, it's, it's tough because if you really do believe, like I do, that, that abortion is an institutionalized form of murder that has resulted in the death of millions upon millions of innocent children, it's like, I know it's hard. 
to just put that aside and still try to be friends with someone. But if we lived in a world, just think about it this way. If we lived in a world where we just refuse to ever engage with our moral adversaries and just keep ourselves in a, in a bubble and refuse, just completely refuse to engage, not only are you not going to be able to grow your message, even though most people won't be convinced, there's at least a possibility that some people can. And by shutting yourself out from those that think differently than you, no one's going to hear what you have to say. And the other thing is that you can't find, like I said, you can't find common ground on everything else. When it comes to international relations, imagine how the world would work if we only did business, if we only traded, if we only invested with countries that we completely agreed with on a moral level. The entire Middle East would be shut out. The uh, most of Asia would be shut out, especially China and Russia. I mean, Russia kind of is getting shut out, which is interesting because, you know, on a moral level, there are definitely countries that are a lot worse than Russia that we have a decent relationship with. But, you know, this isn't a foreign policy international relations video. So, you know, we may talk about that at a different, at a different date, but not, not in this video. But... Yeah, it's like, imagine all the wars that have been averted through diplomacy, because even though we will never find consensus with things, we can at least agree to coexist, you know? I think that's a very important quality in human life, to preserve human life. Even if you think that these people are against you, they, you know, it, it, life is just so complicated, man. It really is. Morality is so complicated. Every single person, I would say the vast majority of people who hold a certain view aren't like, yeah, I'm evil. I, I am such an evil piece of shit. And that is why I believe what I believe, because I just want to cause the most suffering possible. Politicians are definitely those kinds of people, but your average person is not. They don't come to their conclusions based off of hatred. They believe what they believe because they think it's true. They think it's morally righteous. It's like there's so many things that I believe that I can't, like, I can't imagine supporting institutionalized murder. I can't imagine denying health care to someone just because they're poor. I can't imagine basically calling someone subhuman and, and just not thinking of them as an actual person just because they come, they come from a different country. There's so many things that I just can't imagine for myself ever thinking, but there are so many people that think that way. So what do you do? Do you shut yourself out or do you open yourself up? I choose to open myself up every single time. I don't think that most of the people you see are bad people online that have their political opinions. I think they truly believe in what they say. And you, you may not like it, but it's something that I think we'd be better off accepting is the diversity of opinion. Even when it gets difficult sometimes to have a, uh, to have a conversation about. But I think I consider myself a level-headed person I'm willing to have a an open conversation about almost any political issue, pretty uh, any issue really. So, you know, I think that's where I stand. I think, you know, it could be applied to other issues too, obviously. I I just mentioned a couple of them. My <laughs> I just revealed my positions on immigration and healthcare. There are a couple other ones too that, you know. So, it's like where do I fit in a box? Am I a conservative? People claim that I'm some right-wing fucking nut job. But I don't know. There's some views I have that wouldn't really fit that box. Fox News, oh my God, they would hate me. And if I ran for office as a Republican, I'd be instantly labeled as a rhino for some of the things that I believe. So I don't know. But I just want to make a video talking about differences in people's beliefs and how to kind of cope with that, how to coexist with other people who you may not personally agree with. I grew up in New York City, 
holding a wide range of political views that pretty much everybody disagreed with. Because it's New York City. Of course, no one's going to agree with anything that is... <laughs> that is, like, right of, like, so, like, this is the political compass, right? And then this would be the center. Like, my nose would be the center. Anything that is to the right of here is, like, considered, like, no. You can't believe that in New York City. <laughs> you just can't. So, I, you know, I, I've had that struggle for my entire life is trying to get people to accept me for who I am, not just what I believe in politically. It's always a tough thing. But I try to persevere. I try to get through all that, and I try to get through to people no matter what they believe. If As long as I think that they are a good person at heart and that they have their best, they have best interest at heart, then I think, you know, we can get along and we can be just fine. So... Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think.